Hey everybody, um, <clears throat> so uh, I'm making shipping containers. I was uh, I was kind of going through my pile of shame. I was trying to find some of my uh, my infinity minis, unpainted um, infinity minis. I have a few. They're really cool. They're metal. You know, I I hate metal minis. They're just so, so hard to work with compared to plastic. I wish, I wish, you know, just really, really wish that Corvus Belly would switch over to plastic. Um, but uh, I wanna use these for Stargrave. Um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna, I'm making some shipping containers. I found these. Uh, and so shipping containers, um, they are, actual dimensions they are like 40 feet or 80 feet or 10 feet by 10 feet by 10 feet so you know you can see like these guys are pretty much like true 28 millimeter you know that's they're about four inches by two inches if that was 40 feet by 20 feet so um this is this is infinity stuff this comes with like box sets if you get minis um so you have some terrain to play with but uh so i wanted to make some shipping containers and then this is like my prototype piece and uh it does you know it gets the uh gets the idea across um i, I there's some improvements i want to make but this um making these is super super cheap I was looking online for um, models, you know, like Model Railroad or like something that would be the right scale. And I think that making them yourself is just, it's, it's, it's better, okay? <laughs> uh, so to make these, I basically, I just use these, these bits of styrene. Um, so I'm using some metal siding sheets. Uh, and then these at, at Hobby Town, these were 765. And then I used um, a little, a square tube one and an angle one that these are about five millimeters. Um, and, and you know, like that's all I needed to make these. So grand total, we're looking at about like $14. Well, maybe $15, but you would get multiple. Like you could get, this is what's, let's see. This is, this is left over from one of these sheets. So I could get, you know, um, I could get another one of these out of this. So like two, two of these for $15 is, is around what you're looking at. And then like, I, I think this stuff is fantastic. Um, I got, I got some more, I got some little, uh, other pieces, T, T shapes, H, Z channels, um, all around like five millimeters. So yeah, if you, if you wanted to get these, I will give you some, some numbers. Um, so metal siding, the, these come in all different shapes and sizes, but the evergreen stuff is cheap and it's nice to work with. Um, so 4528 is the metal siding. Um, 296 is the L angle. And then 253 is the square tube. And then if you wanted to pick up some of these other ones too, if you wanted to do this project, uh, 286 is the H column, 767 is the T column, and then 756 is the Z channel. And all of these are gonna run, run you around like four bucks. And then the, uh, the, you know, the siding is gonna run you around eight. So, all right, let's make some little shipping containers. So 
I've got some things out here. These are just things that I like to work with when I'm working with styrene, when I'm doing uh, scratch building stuff. So, okay, you, I, I really, really highly recommend, this just comes in handy for so many different things. Get a good metal T-square. Uh, so it just has a right angle and then it's, this is steel. And then this is also steel. So these just, I, I use these constantly, you know, just, just do yourself a favor and get one. This is another thing that I use constantly. So this is actually for sewing, but this is just has um, gr inch grids laid out on it. So I just, I use it constantly to measure things and just, you know, to cut like right angles and, and do, you know, and then if I cut through, then I don't cut into my works, to my table, it just goes into here. And then another thing that I, that I got that I use all the time that I really like is this thing, the chopper. So this is from Northwest Short Line. Um, and then Micromark makes one that's cheap it's cheaper. This one is a lot nicer. I don't remember how much I paid for this one. I think these are these are a little bit pricier. This thing was, I want to say it was about fifty dollars, but it's it's really sturdy, high quality, and it just has a a razor blade that screws into here, and then you can set this. There's another piece like this that it has 45 degree angles, 30, you know, it has all these angles set up. So you can measure out if you have like something that you, like these are inches. If you have something and then you wanna, you, you're you trying to reproduce it, you can just set that up and say, okay, that's how long it is. Let's screw this part down. And then, you know, and then just whack 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 and then just keep keep making more of them so it comes in super super handy there's ones there's much much cheaper ones that you can get that will run you like closer to 20 bucks or like 16 dollars but these are this is just really high it's a really nice one okay so oh and then a, a pencil you know because uh because it you can write on styrene with a pencil and then I find myself using a, a pair of tweezers a lot. And also I have some hobby cement. Uh, uh, this is, this is um, to me an extra thin, but, it's, but what I did was I, I put the, the chopped up, like the leftovers of this stuff in here and it makes a superior like sprue goo, you know, like gap filler to um, like, where is it? Uh, GW, you know, like plastic sprues. Like this is just acetone and then there's some sprues melted in there in the bottom, but it's um, the GW plastic is like hard, hard plastic. So it's, you know, um, it's just, this is way better, okay? So keep your keep your cutoffs and then toss them in, you know, a a, a, um, a jar of styrene glue, and uh, and then make one of these. In fact, I'm I'm gonna toss this out right now. So, okay. First off, I've uh, I've already cut these down into uh, two inch strips. So what I what I want to do first off is I'm gonna make the the frame on these guys. Uh, I have a couple of these that I already cut down. So these are two inches. So I know that I want these corner bits to be, you know, this is two inches. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure in between. Just 
see how, how long this is. And then I like to measure in mil millimeters when I'm doing stuff like this because it's a lot more precise. And like if you do laser cutting, typically everything in laser cutting is in millimeters. But right there I can see that that's, you know, 40, 40 millimeters. And then by 40 millimeters. So I'm just chopping these down. So I'm gonna put on here. Oops, 40. It doesn't need to be completely exact. You know, it just like, if you were doing laser cutting, you would still have to do this part by hand, like chopping these up. So, and you can totally do it by hand. There's no, there's no reason why you can't. And you can do, you know, you can do this part too by hand. This is just, this just makes it so much easier reproducing these parts. See, it also has this little lip on the side. measurements. Close enough. <laughs> and then, um, I like to when I'm doing this, um, <clears throat> uh, I like to sort of do a little like tack weld with um, with some plastic glue. So in fact, I'm gonna set this up right here. I want to make a nice little right angle Gonna take some uh, plastic glue, you know, um, and I like I like Tamiya and I like this stuff, this Mr. Hobby stuff. You can get this at um, Hobby Lobby, you know, or any any hobby store that's worth their salt. give it a few seconds it only it only needs like a you know a minute basically this stuff is um, the main ingredient is acetone which is 
nail polish remover. I mean, you could use nail polish remover, but it also has like, they make some of this stuff that has, uh, it does have like super glue in it too. And then it has, um, they make some that has like a resin, you know, where it's thicker like this. Um, or just make your own. So, okay, that's good. And then pop this one on there. And I do, I do recommend like just from experience, I recommend making these the side pieces first. Before making the, the long sides. Watch out though, because this stuff, this um, this plastic glue will melt. It will um, melt the, uh, whatever this is, the heat stamp stuff that's on these, um, like this rubber stuff. Um, and it will glue it, you know, it will sort of stick to that, so. Okay, so I have my two end sides ready. So I'm just gonna measure in here. It's uh, 92 millimeters. Could just do it like that too it's, it's not a big deal like these these just need to be roughly the right size you know it's not it's not a it's not a big deal but um <clears throat> i do want them to be around the right size so I just need to, um, <clears throat> I just need to cut four, four pieces like this, this size. So I can use my chopper thing, set that up. Ooh, that's gonna be just a little bit too long. So I'll just, I'll just sort of manually And, um, you know, again, like save, save these little cutoffs because these, they, you know, you might want to model something later that you, you be happy that you saved them. Be a, a little pack rat. I'm gonna cut out four of these. Okay, I forgot one thing uh, that I like to use. <laughs> one tool. So, 
I'm just, I, when I was chopping these, they got a little bit wonky. Like you can see they kind of went that way. So I'm just gonna use an, a, a nail file to even them all up. And then sometimes, you know, when you cut uh, like the sides, like th these, they can get burrs on them too. And it, uh, it helps to just hit them with the nail file like this. And it's really quick. Just evens everything up. But I like the idea of um, these shipping containers not all looking exactly the same, like having different uh, different companies um, that produce them or whatever, so they don't all look exactly the same. So it's fine if they have a little character, if they're a little banged up or different. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to add, I'm going to do something different with this one too. I'm going to cut some of these channel pieces to put along the bottom because I was looking at a shipping container that was by my house and uh, they have these, well this one had these little sort of feet on it. Um, just a it's a Z shape and then I'm gonna cut these like two of these down to the same size as these guys okay so um, if I if I add this little rail thing on the bottom of this piece and then pop it onto here like this that kind of puts the the floor of this guy right level with um if i can get this up here so you can see it see like that <laughs> uh puts it like right level with the, the bottom of this bar thing. So I think I like that a little better. I like the look of that a little better. So what I'm gonna do though, I need to chop this down. Um, okay, let's see. So that's gonna be from, give me, it's mine. That's gonna be from there to there. And then this stuff, this little, these little channels are about, they're like half a millimeter thick. So if I chop that down, I need my caliper. So I'm just gonna kind of, I'm just gonna line it up, right? And then kind of eyeball it. I need, and I need a third hand, a fourth hand. Uh, so about right there. You know, again, doesn't need to be super, super exact. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna chop this down. And 
and uh, so this this part though these um, this corrugated metal stuff it's a little bit easier to cut from the well it, it's it's easier to cut from the other side so I'm just gonna start this cut on this side. And flip it over right there. Actually, so this is this is how I use these. This, um, so I'll line it up on here uh, on my cutting mat where I want my cut. And then just run it through here. So you don't you don't want to push super super hard. Um, you what you really want to do is just score it, do multiple passes, and then with styrene you can just uh, snap it. Like I'm just gonna cut through it because this is how I like to do it. Um, but I'm just gonna do you know a few a few passes. And this is the, the really nice part about having the steel ruler is because um, you can, you if you were using like a plastic ruler, you, you can slice into the ruler. So this is nice because it just, it keeps that edge when you're using some kind of a sharp tool. You can just snap it like that or just score it like this And then this stuff cures like super, super quick. You know, you can just, you can just hold it. Uh, like I can, I can put the, I can put my other piece like this and then let it rest on there. But it's, it doesn't, doesn't take long to cure at all. You can just, you know, hold it for a few seconds or just kind of tack it on and then let it do its thing. And it cures like really quickly. So that's already um, sticking. So, but this, this is where, when, uh, when the, the, the side is not visible this stuff makes a really great gap filler. Like it's just, it's really gonna reinforce that. Um, you can see it's just, it's pretty, it's a lot thicker, um, but it makes a, a tougher weld. And this is like an actual weld. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a plastic weld.
But if it's if it's somewhere that's not going to be visible like that, like on the inside, then I'll just put I'll I'll goop it on I'll I'll throw some on there to make it stronger. And if you are going for that look like a weld, there's ways to do that too that will reinforce it. I'm not sure that this is the right stuff, but just leave that to cure. Okay, so I've got my uh, sides cut out. Um, this is the, uh, this is actually from the other, from this one. These are the exact same size. So I actually did a pretty good job of measuring these. Um, they're like pretty much the same size. So anyways, um, there's a tiny, little teeny tiny gap. Like these are, this is gonna go up here and there's just a little teeny tiny gap. So what I'm gonna do is just chop off some of these extra little bits and then put some uh, on there, on top, to kind of cover that up. But, um, so what I wanna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and glue on uh, the, uh, the, the sides. And then for, there's, I just, I ran out of this corrugated stuff. I have one more, well, I have another bag of it, but it doesn't need to show through on that side. I want it to show through on this side because I want the, the, I think when I was, when I was making these, I was thinking the compressive forces are going to be from, like, these are supposed to help with uh, them getting squished from the sides. So that's, that just sort of reinforces them. So, but uh, anyways, yeah. So the, the, the bottoms is not gonna show this part. So I'm just gonna cut off some other little random bits of styrene and then put them in the bottom there. Uh, put the glue on the sides and set up my right angle. And yeah, if you, if you do, you know, if you have some, spots that need to be like, or if you need to even things up, you can take take like a, a nail file or, you know, something. I, I like these nail files, they just come in super handy. But just take it and then put it up against the steel, steel ruler and then kind of even them up to get a, a nice right angle and, you know, make sure that they're um, the same size. So, Anyways, yeah, glue these guys up. I'm going to do, I want this part to show through. And, but this is, this is easy. You know, it's old hat at this point. I'll just show you again, just tacking these on. And then I'll probably put some of the thick stuff on, you know, in a, uh, in a second after this has a, a second to kind of weld like that. Like you can see how fast it glues on there with this stuff. So I'm just gonna tack it on. And then I'm gonna put the thick goopy stuff on to create a tough weld in there. And I'm gonna put the sides on first before I drop in the um, thick and goopy. Uh, before I drop in the top and bottom. Because those, that's, that's gonna be a lot more noticeable because this, these little L pieces will hide any anything in here, but I want nice right angles on these sides. Just speaking from experience. So 
So uh, I'm gonna make some, I'm just gonna copy this piece for the floor. But uh, I just wanted to show you guys, this stuff is so cheap. Like this is three sheets. Like the only reason why this is more expensive is because it has the texture to it. You know, it's like a special like corrugated thing. And then, but this is just sheets of this stuff. And uh, it, this, this is a uh, half a millimeter thick, three sheets for uh, 450. So yeah, it's super, super cheap and it's really nice to work with. Uh, but I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna co copy paste this one and then make one for the floor and then have this, uh, actually, yeah. And just, and then, uh, woo, just uh, pop this in here, like so. Oh, I'm glad I actually tried to do that. That's not quite the right size. Need to trim that down a little bit. Do I? Yes, I do. Okay, yeah, can you cut some some ceilings and floors? All right, so that's the like superstructure done. And uh, so I wanted to, I was gonna make some doors. I kind of like just trace this onto here. And then I was gonna cut out the doors and put those on. But I think I kind of like having this open. Uh, so what I'm gonna do instead is I'm just gonna model the hinges that would be holding these on and then make it look like these were repurposed to uh, make something else. So uh, here, you know, again, like uh, just more little random bits of styrene. Uh, these are little strips. They're uh, 115, you know, evergreen strips. Uh, let's see, 0.38 by 0.25 millimeter strips of styrene. So what I want to do is just put, put like, let's see, what is that? Well, about five millimeters. So I'm just going to mark how thick I want these on here. and then use the, the chopper to just make a few like that. Okay, so this is gonna be a little hard to see, <laughs> um, but I'm just, I'm taking these little bits and then putting them on here to make it look like the hinges were taken off. So I wanna put them uh, just to make it look like there were there were doors that were hinged on there at some point and then they got taken off. Yeah. Things are so fiddly. Okay, so now um, you can see how my design changed 
Um, but you know, like I said, like these are shipping containers, like they're gonna look a little bit different. I like this one, you know. Um, this is, looks a little better. But um, so, still not sure if I wanna put some doors in there. I kinda like it just like that. But I thought we could um, paint up this one. Um, so I just, I, I took, I hit this with some spray paint, some Rust-Oleum flat black uh, uh, primer, primer paint, and it just sticks to plastic really, really good. Um, so I'm gonna do some rust colors. I've got just a bunch of rust colors from a, a, a set that I got. This is all model air, you know, orange rust, light rust, dark rust, uh, dark brown. So I'm gonna take these and I'm going to set up a little palette and I'm going to work from dark to light and I'm just gonna take a sponge and do um, Uh, stippling, sponge stippling. So, let's see. Yeah, that's fine. So, this is gonna be like the rust layer. I just, I want it to look uneven and natural. So, I'm just gonna take this sponge, do some stippling all over, hit all those edges and any, um, so I'm not going to worry about like in the grooves and stuff because that's where I want the paint to stick. Um, I'm, I'm going to do hairspray chipping there. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> In case you were curious. So all the stuff in the grooves is gonna be, that that paint is gonna stay there. Okay, so now um, <clears throat> to uh, to do hairspray chipping, we're just gonna spray on a layer of hairspray. Um, <clears throat> it doesn't take a lot. I'm just gonna do a light coat. Uh, <clears throat> and then uh, and then let it dry. But yeah, don't don't. Um, don't put on a ton, just because the, the paint will just come straight off. So all, all we're doing is uh, we do a layer of hairspray, and then when that dries, uh, the um, the paint is gonna, well, it's, so that's gonna dry, the paint dries on top of it. And then you take uh, something like a, a toothbrush, or like a stiff brush and you just get it wet again after the paint's dry on top of it and uh, and then and then it just comes right off so but then you you need to do something to seal it down afterwards so I think I'm gonna use this uh, light sea blue on top of there I think I like the I like those colors so I'm gonna let this dry. I'm going to fill up my compressor with air and then I'll come back to it. So 
a little bit thinner. So I'm not gonna do, <coughs> geez, I'm not gonna do a, uh, a thick layer of paint either. It's gonna be kind of a thin, uh, thin layer of paint, but enough to get some good color. J basically, just enough to get good color. It's supposed to be really weathered. I don't want it to look like new paint. So now that this is dry and it doesn't need to get like bone dry, you know, because we're just going to chip it off anyways. Um, so now I'm going to take some, this is just a stiff, stiff brush and then uh, I'm just going to kind of work the water into there. So you do, you need to let the, the uh, hairspray dissolve first, you know. Um, so then it, it kind of, you, you just put it on, like put the water on and then, then you can push on it and it'll start to chip off. And then one other thing that I want to do before I seal this stuff is uh, I want to do some colored pencil rust. Uh, so, like you, you, this is these are um, watercolor pencils. So you just take it and then you kind of get the tip like a little bit wet. Um, I'm just gonna use some like thinner. This stuff has. Um, flow improver in it, you know? So, anyways, I just get the, the tip kind of wet on there and then like stick it into some of the spots where I want the rust to like run around. It's kind of a subtle effect, but like there's, there's like spots where um, like in these little corners and stuff, you know, like the paint would not, it would not be in good shape, like in certain spots, like along these edges. So it's sort of like, a, it's sort of like an edge highlight. Or it is an edge highlight. It's an easy way to do an edge highlight or you can like draw on little scratches and stuff. And then I have, you know, a few colors. Um, let's see, got a red. But it really, you know, it makes that um, paint job just kind of pop out, add something, you know? Like this red really stands out against the blue. Just gives it a cool, you know, it's a cool um, edge highlight. Create some areas of interest. And if you don't like it, 
it's watercolor. So you can just wipe it off. You know, you can reactivate it with water. Just use like a paper towel or something and then just wipe it off. Like I want to get in here. Areas like that where the rust would be streaking down. 